This is Jack Bourne with another tutorial uh, from the 15 days of jQuery.com website. And uh, this one is quick and dirty Ajax of jQuery. Now, not only is uh, jQuery a, a great library for, for pulling off quick and dirty Ajax tricks on your website, but this tutorial itself is going to be quick and dirty. I'm uh, recording this video on the fly. You might hear a few ums and ahs, so please forgive me. I'm, I'm doing this uh, as we go. So I'm at the jQuery website, and let's navigate through through the Docs section. And now I'm going to go to Basic Ajax, and finally to Ajax Plugin Demos. And I'm, I'm showing you how I got here, so that if you wanted to go to the jQuery website, you could follow along. Okay, so uh, there's a couple examples on this page. I have to run through them pretty quick, because I, I plan on loading this video up to YouTube.com, and YouTube only allows uh, 10 minutes of video so I gotta be a little bit quick about this so here we go the first example is uh, pretty quick it's called loaded from loaded from an ex loaded from an HTML file and what what you essentially have here is you have this div and this boundary around it is uh, demarcates the div but uh, inside this div really there's there's no content until jQuery comes along and adds some HTML. So how did it do this? What it does is, with, if you look at this short little snippet of jQuery code, you'll see that it looks for a div on this page with an ID of HTML. Okay, and that's where you see this boundary. So it finds that div, and we're going to populate it with some HTML using a little, neat little jQuery function, load. So load goes and grabs whatever page is, is inside the parentheses, and that would be, in this case, ajax-test.html. So I've highlighted this, and I'm going to hit Control-C. I'm going to drag this down so you can see that I'm going to go to the address bar and paste ajax-test.html and go to that page. And here we have an actual HTML page. And if I view the source code, you'll see it is indeed HTML. We have opening and closing H1 tags and some other familiar HTML and I'm not going to go through that, but it's just a little little snippet of HTML. So let's go let's go through this code real quick. What we're doing is we're grabbing that HTML, uh, be it large or small. We're grabbing that HTML found on this page inside the load function, and we're going to uh, jQuery is going to populate that inside of the div with the ID of HTML, and this is what you get. This is the HTML from that external file, and that's the ma that's one of the magic. Uh, I hate to say magic tricks, but that's some of the magic that you can create with Ajax. Uh, okay, so let's go down a little bit. I'm going to scroll down because I know I'm short on time here. Okay, I'm going to go down to, I'm going to skip some of the XML stuff. And this is loaded from a dynamic HTML file. Now, if you look at what John, the creator of jQuery, is doing, he's targeting a CGI file. Most of you already know, and for those of you who don't, I'll tell you, CGI is a server-side script. Um, as it just, this page could just as easily have been HTML.php or whatever.php or ASP or any of the other server-side languages. Okay, so the point being that we're going to be able to pass some information to this page, and then the server is going to be able to generate some information. Now, what's so neat about Ajax is that you're able to grab this information from an external, from, a, from another file. So this, we're, we're grabbing the, the information from this extra file we're, after we pass some information to it, and we're bringing the, the generated content from that file back into this file. Where are we putting it? We're putting it in a div with, a, with an ID of DHTML, and that would be this right here where you see the boundary. Okay. So let me go through that again. jQuery is targeting this div with an ID of DHTML. We're using that familiar load function that I just talked about. It's targeting the HTML.CGI page. Now let me go ahead and copy and paste this. For those of you not familiar with how server-side files work, I'm going to copy this into the address bar, and you'll see that it says just hello, comma. Why doesn't it say hello, John, like it shows you uh, right here. That's because we need to pass some information to it. We're going to tell it name equals John. 
and all of a sudden you see hello John. So if we if we tell this file that the main the the variable name should have the value of John, and that's how this is done right here using this uh, jQuery structure. Uh, the CGI file will spit out hello comma John. So the load and then the load function of jQuery picks up and says we're going to grab all the HTML that's generated and we're going to we're going to grab that HTML and put it inside the div if we find a div that has an ID of DHTML that's where we're going to put it so this is the result that you get here okay let's scroll down again I'm going to skip the XML file this one is loaded from a text file right here okay and here we're using a function we haven't discussed yet the jQuery get function. Here's the page that we're targeting. As you can see, it's got a txt, txt suffix, so it's a text file. Um, and we're using a function you haven't seen before, but it's going to, what it's going to do is it's going to take anything that it finds over here and it's going to assign it to this uh, variable. It's going to turn it into a JavaScript variable, uh, the, the variable being txt. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy and paste this into our address address bar of Firefox and we've got this is coming from a text file so here's our text file so when we come back how did we generate this HTML well we did that by using the jQuery HTML function the jQuery HTML function allows us to do a couple things but what we're doing right here is we're sandwiching our JavaScript variable with the new information that we grabbed from this file we're going to sandwich that between an opening and closing h1 tag. Okay, so we have taken just plain old Jane text, and we have turned it into some H some HTML that we've created on the fly, client side, using JavaScript uh, via the jQuery uh, library. And then we're going to we're going to target the div with the ID of of txt, and that would be the div highlighted by this border here. Okay, now. I want to go through this one last example, and this is not the last example on the page, but this is the last one I'm going to do, because I'll, I just showed you how to use the uh, jQuery get function, and now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the uh, jQuery post function. This is very similar to where uh, above we were sending what amounts to get variables. If you're if you're a PHP or this is like the get super global variable. Now we're sending uh, post variable information. Uh, we're sending the same, we got a variable name, and we got a value of John. So we're doing the same thing. It's going to create hello John. We're sending it to a server-side script, but the server-side script creates some XML uh, on the fly. So John has added an extra twist in here where this server-side code is generating XML, so we need to use our XML function to read the XML. So uh, if you, if you if you go to the jQuery page that, I, that, that I'm on right now, you'll see how this is done. Essentially what you're doing is uh, this is telling jQuery to look for the opening and closing title tags in the XML that's generated to grab the text and to assign that to a variable, uh, to a JavaScript variable, which also happens to uh, be called text. Now I could get a little confusing. The function and the JavaScript variable do not have to match. Um, so what we've done is we've created a JavaScript variable and we've assigned a value to it that came from this XML file. Well, it's a CGI file that generates XML. And then, home stretch, we're creating some HTML out of it. So we're sandwiching that text information between some H2 opening and closing tags. And across the finish line, we're loading it into a div with an ID of DXML.